Whether you're a seasoned mariner or just testing the water, your hometown marina has all the info you need to navigate the thrills and spills of the boating lifestyle. Coming to you from our home port of Glencoe Marina at the beautiful Lake of the Ozarks, host Deborah Wolf joins boating expert Sherry Jackson and Captain Steve Lemons to help you get off the dock and on the water down and by from your hometown marina. Welcome to your hometown marina. I'm your host, Deborah Wolf. We're coming to you from our home port of Glencove Marina here at the beautiful Lake of the Ozarks. I'm joined by Glencove owner Sherry Jackson, along with personal watercraft service writer Pat Lemons and our in house expert, Captain Steve Lemons. We're going to talk today about what's likely to be the three favorite letters of water lovers who don't necessarily want to commit to the boating lifestyle PWCs. Sherry, the popularity of personal watercraft certainly is reflected in the sales and service that you do here in Glico Marina. We do. We do a lot of sales. We do a lot of service. We, um, we, you know, we were a dealer for PWCs for a couple different lines over the years, and uh, the service need on this end of the lake was great, so I'm really glad to be able to offer that to our customers. Pat, what are some of the things that folks are looking for when they're making the decision to buy a personal watercraft, and what are some of the service concerns that they should look at down the road? They're looking for size. They, they all want the three passenger units. Um, the younger kids want the speed. What can it do? Can it spin? Can it jump? You know, maneuverability on it. Um, you get up in the 50, 60 year, eight, year age range. They're wanting the touring machine, something that they can comfortably ride on for hours without killing their backsides or their back or their knees. They've come out with so much technology now. They've got what's called a true neutral to where the unit will actually sit still in the water. They've got a suspension that the top cap on the machine actually goes up and down and gives a suspension, gives them a lot more comfortable ride. We do some customizing. The, the kids will bring, make my exhaust louder, you know. <laughs> do different things to it. We do, we also do that to them. I'd like to talk a moment about safety when it comes to personal watercraft. I get a little skittish when I see them jumping the wakes. What people need to be aware of, especially whether it's an adult going out themselves or someone's making the leap and getting one for the kids and the kids are going to go out on them. What well, do they the, need to know? The first thing that they need to know is, is in the state of Missouri we do have a law requiring a driver's license now for younger adults. Uh, it's something that you can take online. Uh, you have to buy it past certain requirements. And what that does is it kind of, give, it kind of gives the kids a rules of the road. In other words, kind of puts a little bit more into their, their mindset as opposed to what a parent will tell. You know, this is the law. This is not something dad's made up, you know, to stop me from doing what I want to do. And is it a valid assumption that a personal watercraft is by nature being smaller than a boat, less expensive than a boat? There definitely is boats out there nowadays that you can buy that are pretty close to the price of a new ultra three-seater, uh, you know, like Pat was talking about with the four-stroke and the brakes and stuff like that. Yeah, there's ones out there that's pretty close, even even uh, going to like a small pontoon with a 40-horse motor on it. Yeah, you can get pretty close to the price of a new PWC. The, the, the PWC probably, in that price range against a boat, the PWC could ride about any time down the lake, but the boat that size would be a little difficult on weekend. You do have you have to do oil change at least once a year. There is a jet pump that needs serviced once a year, minimum. Um, spark plugs every year. There is a complete winterization and dewinterization pr process that you go through on them. As always, so much to think about before getting on the water, and so many questions left to answer here at your hometown marina. Stay tuned. When we return, we're going to go down to the shop where Dan is going to take us through PWC dewinterization one step at a time. Ozark Barge and Dock has been delivering the best quality workmanship and design on the Lake of the Ozarks since 1988. Designed to provide you with low maintenance and durability, our docks will float you through years of fun and recreation. Even in rough water, you can enjoy the lake like it should be. Contact Ozark Barge and Dock at 573-372-5501 or come visit us at our P-Road location just off Highway 5 between Gravois Mill and Lori. Sit back and relax while our skilled employees use top quality materials to create the dock of your dreams. I'm Dan O'Keefe with Glen Cove Marina. I am the PWC technician here and I'm going to show you how to dewinterize a personal watercraft. You'll need a 3 8 ratchet. You'll definitely need a screwdriver for the battery. 
You're going to install some spark plugs. So you're going to need a spark plug socket with an extension, preferably, for easier access. I use a voltmeter so I can make sure the battery's charging after the startup of the dewinterization. The negative post of the battery is disconnected at the winterization. So the first step of the dewinterization is securing the ground cable to the battery to make sure that all electrical components are operating correctly. This is what it looks like when the unit is winterized. Spark plug wires are disconnected from the spark plugs when the engine was fogged at the winterization. With the spark plug hooked up, the boot would be over the spark plug like this. This is proper winterization, dewinterization. So the dewinterization on the spark plugs, the old spark plugs are removed. And new spark plugs are installed. At the dewinterization, you want to start up to burn all the fogging oil out of the cylinders that you installed at the winterization. A fogging oil is an oil that is made to stick to metal to prevent rust when sitting for a long period of time. So we take a can of aerosol fogging oil, we spray it into the throttle bodies, and we also spray it inside the spark plug location. That will get the fogging oil inside the whole entire engine, so the whole period of time it's sitting in the winter, it is not rusty. Start with putting the lanyard on the desk post. This will activate the gauges, let you know if there's anything wrong with the unit. Every good technician should have a flashlight in hand, look inside the engine compartment at the dewinterization, but you want to make sure that the engine compartment stays completely bone dry and there's no leaks. It's always wise to not run a boat out of the water. The personal watercraft, you can with the garden hose attachment fitting in the back of each personal watercraft. If there's the engine running on a garden hose, it has a time of about 8 to 10 minutes of runtime on the garden hose. After that, damage can occur. With checking the fluids, that's the last and final step of the dewinterization process. You always want to make sure that the oil level is full. If there is any antifreeze in the personal watercraft, you want to make sure the antifreeze is at the hot stage and actually the full hot stage. With the dewinterization of a two-stroke, you have an oil tank. That oil tank needs to be filled because that oil is burnt through the system. On a four-stroke personal watercraft, you actually have to change the oil and you have to keep a moderate oil level. With a two-stroke watercraft, the gauge will indicate when the oil level drops to a certain level, which is low, and then you'll have to refill it. With the four-stroke watercraft, you have to check the dipstick, remove the dipstick, and check the level with it warm. Stay tuned to your hometown marina. When we return, we're going to see how Dan uses his tools of the trade to pick up the pace on his days off. <laughs> Holly lift boat lifts. Your boat is a major investment. Make sure it sits on a poly lift. When you need a boat lift to raise your boat out of the water, choose the one voted best boat lift at the lake. Choose poly lift. Any size, built with the best quality construction, a lifetime warranty on the tanks, and the service to stand behind it. We don't just build boat lifts, we build poly lifts. We don't just build boat lifts, we build poly lifts. Welcome back to your hometown marina. I'm Deborah Wolf, and I am joined by Glencoe Marina Chief personal watercraft technician, Dan O'Keefe. Dan, we've looked at how to dewinterize these incredible machines, but you take it to a whole new level on your days off. You actually race personal watercraft. Yes. Yes, I've been racing since 1991. 1992 is when I started, and it's escalated to many world titles and many national titles. It's a bit of joy. You play that down so much, it's escalated to many world titles and national titles. That's rather impressive. What is, how huge is the sport at this time? Um, it's, it's growing every year. The four developments of the four-stroke watercraft have really made it grow. I think uh, you know, 2004 is when, when um, the high-performance four-stroke watercraft came out, and it just opened up a whole new arena for, for other people, and, um, and we just saw it take off from there. Yeah, right. Upping the power, that means upping the speed. So let's talk about what speeds do you reach on this particular watercraft? Um, 100 miles an hour, over 100 miles an hour. 
it um, it's one of uh, one of the dangerous parts of the racing. Um, brings a lot of spectators to uh, to each event to watch. Um, Watch the spills and the crashes, of so course. It's like hockey. People. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a perfect way to put it. And it, uh, it's the acceleration, how fast it gets to 100. Um, that is really the main focus on drag racing, which is what I really am heavily into uh, in, in the racing department. So were you amazed yourself when they first came out with the four-stroke? Were you even amazed at just how fast these can go? That's a very, very good question. Um, we had um, some very high dollar two-strokes um, where you couldn't use the forced induction and um, we had put in uh, years of experience into these two-strokes. Um, the four-stroke right out of the crate stock beat our two-stroke. So that's when it really got everybody's attention and you could tell what kind of power these four strokes can make. That's pretty breathtaking and watching it's pretty breathtaking as well. Yeah. You have a young son. Yes. So when he says, Dad, I want to race, what are you going to tell him? Um, just as long as he's careful. You're going to strap the helmet on him and go, go De buddy, go. Definitely a helmet and, uh, and life vest. But yeah, in fact, it's the question I get almost every single day. <laughs> When's he going to start racing? Yes. We should point out, probably you don't want me to, but we're going to point out that you are undefeated. Yes. And you plan to stay that way? <laughs> I do. I do. I, uh, you know, it's, the last couple of years just been about fun. I just want to have fun and these titles keep coming to me and I think I'm pretty blessed and I'm, I want to keep the undefeated title, but uh, if I lose it, I'll still have fun. Stay tuned to your hometown marina. When we return, Dan's going to answer a very important question about what type of fuel to use in your personal watercraft, and most importantly, what kind of fuel not to use. So stay tuned. We'll be back with more of your hometown marina. What's the difference between sea -Doo and other watercraft? sea -Doo is the only watercraft with intelligent brake and reverse, so it can stop up to 100 feet sooner than other watercraft. which means more control than you've ever had on the water. And effortless maneuvering at the dock. Sea Doo, ultimate control on the water. Welcome back to your hometown marina. I'm your host Deborah Wolf and I'm coming to you from our home port of Glen Cove Marina with personal watercraft technician Dan O'Keefe. Very important viewer question that we have today. Something I was astonished to hear is there a certain type of fuel you should not put in your personal watercraft? Yes, um, or for any boat outboard for that matter, uh, ethanol um, fuel, which you find at majority of your gas stations in the 87, 89 octane. Um, it's very, um, very bad for the fuel lines. Any plastics that you might have in the system, it will start to eat away, break away those plastics and dissolve. When that dissolves, it gets into your fuel system and then it ends up causing a lot of headache. Okay, so if in doubt, ask. Yes. Always ask. But the best bet is just to always fuel your watercraft up on the water. Yes, it is. It ends up being a lot shorter uh, bill and a lot shorter headache down the road. Thank you, Dan. Thank and you. And thank you for submitting your questions to your hometown marina. We always welcome them. Just send us an email at yhtm at glencomarina.com. Stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to go see the two-time best bartender at the lake, Justin Wallace, and see what he's mixed up for us today. You have to stay and work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we cruised on over to the captain's kitchen to meet with kitchen manager John Stubblefield and chef Ryan Arnold. Ryan, what's on the menu today? Tonight we have a soft-shell blue crab marsala. Well, it's a marsala wine with some mushrooms cooked into it with the blue crab. It's a small crab, but you can eat the whole crab itself. You peel one piece of the shell off of it, and the rest of the shell you can eat with, with the crabs. I'll have a flour with a little bit of uh, Cajun and paprika to kick it up a little notch. And then I'll dredge it in the flour, and I'll cook it in a, in a pan with butter and oil. About almost done, that's when I'll throw in the mushrooms, cook those down a little bit, and then hit it with the wine and let that reduce down. The complete recipe can be found on the Your Hometown Marina webpage at www.glencovemarina.com. 
Well, we worked up at Appetite in the captain's kitchen over at Scallywags. Now we come over to Captain Ron's with Justin Wallace, two-time best bartender at the lake. Justin, you're back on your home turf here at Captain Ron's. Yes, Appetite. it feels good. It feels good. The weather's nice, and uh, summer's, summer's here. And some of the best cocktails on the lake. Absolutely. <laughs> well, what do you have for us today? I'm going to be making a fierce grape Gatorade today. It's got Smirnoff white grape vodka. Blue Carousel, a skosh of grenadine, a little sweet and sour, Sprite, tastes just like the Gatorade you get at the gas station. That could be dangerous. This is the part where I always get in trouble. <laughs> Once again, best bartender at the lake. There's a reason for that. Let me try that. I'm going to let you. You definitely have outdone yourself here, but you work in a greater capacity here at Captain Ron's than just the best bartender at the lake because you're very active in trying to get more entertainment over on the west side of the lake here at the Lake of the Ozarks. Yes, I'm an avid music lover, and I am trying to get people to come and enjoy great music. Um, we've got a great venue for it, great beach, a great stage. And I've got a lot of good talent coming, uh, national acts actually this, this year coming through the lake. The Ryan Montblou Band from Boston, Massachusetts will be here June 12th. It's a Wednesday night. Um, they're on their way passing through to Bonnaroo, pretty big music festival. June 20th we'll have Jake Simpson. He's a local favorite. He won Star Search two different times. Uh, our 4th of July show should be, should be spectacular. We'll have it out on the water, uh, a band called The Works. They're a national powerhouse from Cincinnati. Um, they're they're going to be they're going to be quite quite the show. Well, cheers to that. Cheers, thank you. <laughs> and cheers to another episode of your hometown marina. Make sure and stay in touch with us through the Glencoe Marina website at GlencoeMarina.com. We're going to say goodbye with a little video from our home port, the Lake of the Ozarks, and invite you back to our hometown marina real soon. I said our hometown, but it's your hometown marina. It's our hometown. Yeah, it's Isn't our it? hometown. I think so. We could just. Probably leave this in and they'll know what we're talking about because yeah. we're a little confused. So that's what we'll do. Cheers. Cheers.